Is it recording? All right. It is yours truly, Rick the Prince here, and you are watching Surface Rick Town. the Prince here, you. truly, Rick you. the Prince oh, yeah, here. Oh, yeah. What's good? And What's good, guys? It's yours truly, Rick the Prince. And you are watching. So many people just running around. <laughs> just running around. <laughs> I'm gonna start using that. Okay. You've been running around, haven't you? Okay. <laughs> you look tired. <laughs> well, we're gonna go ahead and okay, get okay. into it. How are you doing? I am amazing. It's been this. Yes. A bit long, of long, long time. Long time to get this talented young man on this show. Yes. How are you all doing? It is yours truly, Rick the Prince. You are watching Beneath the Surface. We are here with Ra B himself, the Absolutely. king. <laughs> the king. Now, I met you in 2019. Okay. Briefly at some at an event in the summer. Um Probably Jay, okay. Jay Newton was performing, I know. Destiny Brianna was performing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had ran into you briefly. Like we just like exchanged social medias. Mm -hmm. Like, and that was that. Yeah. But ever since then, like, man, I got hip to your music and just like your whole movement. And I'm so glad that that happened. Like that seed was planted. Thank you. But um, I wanted to talk to you about your new project. Congratulations Appreciate on it. Weekend Lover. Oh, yes. Clap it up. That project, four tracks. Yes. Um. So it originally is about, you know, just like a weekend thing, like a like a fling. Absolutely. Shall I say, you know, yeah. but by the end of it, they realize that this may be more, you know, this may be something that could become real mm -hmm. and love may, may be possible with Absolutely. this. So I thought that story, the way you told that story was really dope. I wanted to talk to you about the process of that project. When did you know it was done? How long were you working on it? All that. Shut. Okay. Uh. Well, like a lot of my projects, I just kind of just record, write without thinking anything. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And after I'm done, I kind of listen to the songs and I ask myself, like, what story is this telling? I kind of like weave it together like that. Um. But the very first track that I um very first song that I created for the project was the title track, Weekend Lover, and it was presented by my friend um, Slim, who's a, also a uh, solo artist, but he plays also with the Band of Brothers. He's the MD for Summer Walker okay. uh, with Black. Um, he's okay. just brilliant, you know what I'm yeah. saying? He's like, Robbie, I created this track for you in mind. I think you're gonna love it. So I heard it and I, um, it was dope, but it was just so different. I didn't know like, what I was gonna do with it, I kind of like slept on it for like a, a year, probably. That's crazy. A year? Probably like a year. <laughs> Y'all be, right? be sitting on, on music. Like, I just didn't know what to do with it. It was just like, it had so many cool changes and stuff. I'm like, what the hell am I gonna do? But I listened to it again a year later. And I was like, this is really good. Yeah. Let me like sit down. And you know what actually happened on, is um I went to an open mic one night and there was another, um. There was an artist performing, his name is District Kirk, he's from mm -hmm. DC. And like people weren't, it wasn't a whole lot of people paying attention, you know what I'm saying? But the type of artist I am, like I don't care if your name is Beyonce or Bianca from the hood down the street, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're a talented, can't, we can't cuss on your camera. Yeah, no, yeah, you if you're talented, I fuck with you, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't care what it is. So that dude, like I was paying attention to his lyrics, to the melodies, and even it was an original song. So you know, a lot of times the open mics, when you sing original songs, most time people tune out like, okay, so whatever. But I was really in tune with what he was doing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I could see the greatness in it. So I linked with him and that was what I needed for um, inspiration. I think that's why I didn't write to it for a whole year because I was just lacking inspiration, motivation. And I got with him and just ideas just started coming and we wrote Weekend Lover 
and ended up writing the entire project. You know what I'm saying? Just started getting tracks from Slim, from um, Chris Theory, who is also produced for Music Soul Child. Um, shout out, shout Munir out. Zaki, uh, who is freaking brilliant. Um, he's worked with, uh, oh, so Lord. Simone Royale, who's been on here, and yeah. a lot of other dope artists. Uh, yeah, and Chris Theory produced, produced the last record as well. Um, so the weekend lover does start out like introducing, um, setting up the project, and letting the individual know that every day is a new choice. We make our beds and we lie in them. Who do you want to lay down with? Essentially saying, you know, you pick your path. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So do you want to do this? Do you? You know the consequences. Just you know, choose wisely. Right, right. And um, I wanted to tell a, a story about you know just being super free on the weekend, doing what you want to do, you know, having great sex, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But what I liked about this individual is they gave um, the other people they, they were engaging in these activities with permission to choose if that's what they want to get with or not. You, I'm letting you know, I'm honest, like, I don't want nothing it's real right now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But if you want to do it, cool, but it's, but it's going to be hard to leave because what I got is good, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So. Uh, yeah. How you gonna do that to somebody? That's, but you know what? I wish people like, would do that because when they uh -huh. don't, you'll be like, what is this? What are we doing? Are they we something? Are we not? You. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why like, I just, I don't know if it's because I come from the church or what it is. I try to be like kind of responsible with my music and stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just, I, I just thought it would be better to have somebody who is kind of like all over the place to just kind of be responsible at the same time and be yeah. like, listen, this is what it is. Cause people, listen, I watch a whole lot of snap on TV and mm -hmm. folks like come and kill folks and like, and it's because you didn't let them know what the hell was going on. You right. had a wife and a man and all right. of a sudden, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so yeah. it's crazy. So that's that song. But, um, and I, actually that's been me before, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. playing around, you know what I'm saying? But then you meet somebody that you connect with on a whole other level and they stimulate you on a, a higher level of consciousness. And you're like, wait a minute, I think you may be, you may be the one, you know, to make me stop playing in these streets. I, mm -hmm. Like on the song I love. I with. may not just want to knock the boots. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that's what mm -hmm. it's about. So how did you know the project was done? Like, I always ask an artist this, because like, Absolutely. when you're like a perfectionist, and I, I know your music, like you're very mm -hmm. detailed about like, what you do on a track. How do you know when a project's done? Well, it was originally just three songs, you know what I'm saying? And it ended Ooh. on um, Touch. Touch. And yes. that was just them being like intimate, you know what I'm saying? And having that tantric experience. And I let a friend of mine hear it. And it's crazy because he's like a gospel artist. Are you familiar with um, Vashon Mitchell? No. No, I'm not. Um, I will be nobody after this. greater. Yo! Nobody greater than yes, you. Yes, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, he heard because me and him go to the same barber. Okay. And I let him hear the project. He was like, everything sounds good, right, B? But I get the story, I get like, you know, this individual, you know, goes out, normally likes to smash and that's it. I get that uh, there's a connection that the person has never felt. I get that they, you know, they had, they get intimate, but I don't, um, I don't necessarily hear yet that they fell in love with each other. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh Lord, you know, hey, who wants to hear that? You think the project is done. Mm -hmm. You're like, I, the story is not complete based off of how, how you're saying it's going. So, I'm, so that's Shit. where the record with Contrell came in. Yes, absolutely. Got so you. I went back to Chris Theory. I was like, Theory, I've been sitting with this melody for a very long time. The first half of um, I Love You, No One Knows. No one I, lo I, lo I love that intro. Thank you. Yeah. I've had that for probably since I was like, I don't know, like in college or something. Like it, I've had that a long time because I wrote it on the porch of my mom's house, just kind of chilling, vibing. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't know what to do with it until right. this moment. I was like, you know what? Maybe if I get with District Kurt, we can extend it and try to build a whole song, you know, out of it. And it just turned into something beautiful. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to mix elements of, you know, classic songwriting, classic melodies like Stevie Wonder, um, Nat King Cole, um, but then mix it with like a trap, you know, current day element. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. So. No, I caught, yeah. that. I, nah. caught that. I caught that. Now, we're going to come back to the EP, but when I was preparing for this, I seen that you mm -hmm. started in a boy band. <laughs> this man was signed to LaFace Records. <laughs> in the 90s. In a, you know, you had to have that in hard a, in a, <laughs> <laughs> that, 
everybody had a head. Not the vibe. Okay. Yes. So oh you were God. in a group. Now yes. I thought that was very interesting. Um, I wanted you to talk about everything that was happening during that time. Mm -hmm. Like how did that all come about? And also looking back, mm -hmm. what did you? What would you tell your younger self during that time? So like, <sighs> shucks, right, right. Um. Mm -hmm first happened what was going on uh A atlanta was popping you know what i'm saying so well at that time new york was popping uh so puffy had bad boy you know yeah. faith evans and uh, 112 and i mean uh biggie all that stuff so yeah. that was around that time when andre was like okay y'all talking about all this stuff but and you know it's east coast versus west coast but y'all don't y'all don't even know like we got some stuff going yeah, on in south atlanta. Side. South, atlanta got something to say you know what i'm saying the south got something to Absolutely. say and so i came up around that time and so i was signed to the face records with andre 3000 and uh and uh tlc and tony braxton mm -hmm. and usher and i mean all the people, people people were my label mates and we saw each other like all the time you know yeah. different events different rehearsals all that so um there was just a sense of pride and and it's, looking back it was a sense of pride and and something very um shucks historical like going on yeah but i was so young i was like middle school going into high school i i didn't really couldn't fully embrace the magnitude of what was taking place you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah, like because yeah, yeah. even how i got the deal i came home one day this was seventh grade and my dad was like do you want to be in a singing group i was like uh, I guess so. Mm. But you know, you're, you're just going to school, oh, yeah. trying to look good for your friends, and you like singing. You know what I'm saying? Right, and, right. and and during that time, there was no. I'm mean, telling my age, right? I don't give a heck. I don't care. Uh, there was no internet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There was so like, I guess I want to be a singer. I mean, I don't really know. Um, so he was like, um, his friend knew L.A. Reid, and they were trying to start a, a, a boy band. And um, so I went. I sang for L.A. Reid. His wife at the time, Pebbles. Um, Pebble. I know, right? Do you want to ride in my Mercedes? <laughs> okay. <so>. Shout out. <laughs> right. Give to your city money. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, she gave some Coca Cola and everything. Now, thank you, Pebbles. And um, yeah, they they went down the list and they told you exactly what you were going to do. Labels still do the same thing right now. So they were like, um, one of my group members there was like, you're going to sing the uh, verses, you're going to sing the bridges. You're like the guy you had, you're very intelligent. You talk during the interviews. Um, you're going to be the sexy one, the sexy symbol that was. Sexy. They really do that. Yes. So like, and when you're like that young and impressionable, like you're just like, I guess this is how it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to wear. These are the songs you're going to sing, you know? So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't really have a, a say so in what was going on. I was just doing it. And I thought as a black man, this is what you're supposed to sing about dressed like period right you know right, so right. yeah but looking back what okay. did you learn from that whole era of your life uh what did i learn i learned that i did not know who the hell i was <laughs> you know what i'm saying i was just blending in i was i was um letting the things that i wore define who i was as an individual gotcha. you know what i'm saying yeah. and it took me like the group not making it and joining uh, this theater company called the Freddie Hendrix Youth Ensemble of Atlanta, mm -hmm. where I just found my voice, my purpose. I embraced my light and knew that I was here to ultimately, cause uh, when I first got into the theater company, like I thought I was the shit, you know what I'm saying? And not because I just love myself, it's yeah. because I had the best clothes, I had a record deal, mm -hmm. I, you know, I had money, you know, all this stuff. I, I felt good about myself because of things, you right. know what I'm saying? But once I joined the company, I felt good about myself because I genuinely love myself. You know what I'm saying? My the th my theater um, director, Freddie Hendricks, he was like, I used to wear like all these colored contacts. And this is not knocking nobody that wears contacts. Nobody that knocks. No, I'm not knocking nobody that wears the best name brand clothes, uh -huh. wears weave, all that stuff. But yeah. if you don't have a good sense of self before you put all that stuff on, you know, it kind of wears you instead of you wearing it and God, you yeah. giving it purpose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You let all that stuff define who you're going to be. Yeah. And it should be the other way around. So. He was like, why do you wear the contacts on? Your eyes are so beautiful. And so it just got me to thinking like, shit, why do I wear them? You know what I'm saying? Right. So I had to fall in love with myself first before I put on any other other stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate him for that. I appreciate him for letting me know that even though you're great, yes, Robbie, you are great, but you, you are here to also turn that magnifying glass around 
on other people and let them know that you too are great. We're all extensions of God and collectively we are that vibration, that source. You know what I'm saying? It's never yeah. just about you. Even when you're by yourself, it's not about you. It's about the air. It's about uh, 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 the, the, the grass. The, like, you know what I'm saying? That's just, it's yeah. never just about you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's where I am now. Okay. So, but then I, I wasn't. <laughs> and I, a lot of people now ain't like that. Right, so right. Grateful. Drop that gym. <laughs> Drop that gym. <laughs> Now, really? I want to get back to your EP. You have a song, Caught Touch, that we spoke about mm -hmm. earlier. Yes. Favorite song? Is that my favorite song? <laughs> There's a re the reason why I like that, the reason why that record sticks out to me is because, one, it's 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 bold, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's sensual, sexy, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, the vocal delivery. Mm -hmm. One thing I, I noticed about you is you know your, your pocket you mm -hmm. know how to make a record. Thank you. And if you got the ear, you got the ear. Um, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't always like that. Right. You know, you've been doing music for a while and it took you time to get to that point. Absolutely. Um, I wanted you to talk about like, how did you come into yourself with your confidence and finding who Robbie is in a song? Okay. Well, I started writing again in the, that same theater company that I was telling you about because all the productions we did um, were original productions. Okay. And um, so if you wanted to have a lead role, you had to create it. You know what I'm saying? So everything, all the songs, all the monologues, even the choreography was created by all of us. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's where I started songwriting. Uh, and be, being comfortable to just like put my full self in and be fearless, that just had to be developed over time, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. in the beginning, uh, you know, I was, listen, I'm a very free individual, but I was scared to say like, and I'm, ah! <laughs> I still deal with it sometimes. <laughs> I'd be scared to say like, he or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I still yeah. don't because I don't want to like box myself in, but I was saying she, but sometimes I wasn't talking about no she, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now I just kind of just leave it open. You know what I'm saying? So everybody can sing it, everybody can relate. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I mean, I want to say, yeah, we, but I just rather just open. Mm -hmm. But as far as actually, like, go ahead. I don't want to cut you no, off. No, no, you good. You go. But that actually remind me of something. <laughs> I remember um, years and years ago, Drake was um, talking about in an interview why he loved Aaliyah so much. Mm -hmm. And he said he loved Aaliyah because the way she approached the song was not gender specific. Absolutely. Like it was something that both um, a female and a male could relate to. That's what I want to so, say. And not everybody can do that. Mm hmm. Yeah, I want I, I consciously like make a conscious effort to to just you know not gender what I'm talking about mm -hmm. so just stay open because um, I feel that's like that's my vibration you know yeah. what I'm saying sometimes it's this sometimes it's that sometimes you know I'm just Robbie you know what I'm saying uh, but my stage presence that just had to <sighs> this man's stage nah, presence that just had to be developed I was super shy in the beginning you know what I'm saying uh -huh. so I was like oh my gosh people are gonna look at me hump this mic right now <laughs> my mom's <laughs> out there you know what I'm saying but the more I did it and the more I like I said embraced my full self and and to know that I do come from that Prince Rick James Grace Jones uh, Earth Wind and Fire yeah. type rebellious in your face like energy the more comfortable I got and going back to touch I was very, very inspired by like Janet Jackson. You know, like mm -hmm. anytime, any place, that yeah. simplicity. Like I love that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Janet mixed with um 112's uh I don't know what song that is, but definitely Janet. Um mm -hmm. so for you. Okay. I just wanted to be real sexy. Sexy comes easy for me. Yeah. Listen, that's real easy for like listen. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I wrote. <laughs> if you wanna be my weekend love, it's gonna be hard to leave me. <laughs> that could <come> easy, man. <laughs> I'm just, I could write new songs all day long. Yep. <laughs> all right. So, no, no, you good, you good, you good. So, you open for Eric Badu? Absolutely, absolutely. That was crazy because um, I was um, booked to perform in Dallas, Texas at the Dallas Soul Music Conference. Right. And Erica was hosting the event. And um, uh, yeah, while I was singing, she came out there with, with her own camera and started yeah. taking pictures of me. Yeah. And I freaked out because I, well, inside I did. Because, you know, I'm, I, I got to be very poised on stage. I ain't going to do that on stage. It's right. showtime. But inside I was like, this is goddamn, because she was like this. 
Every girl I do is like bending down, taking pictures of me. You know what I'm saying? So, and I didn't, I didn't talk to her, I didn't anything, because I just didn't want to. I didn't want to be that guy that was all in her face and stuff. I was just, I was thankful, but I just didn't. I just went home. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And um, next thing I know, the next day, people were calling me. Saying that Erica Badu was wondering who, who was that guy on stage singing, who's that little guy on stage. I was like, listen, well, if you can get in contact with her, let her know that I'm down to open for her like anytime, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And any place, she, any, <laughs> whatever, you know. But and sh her management reached out to me, and I think she even gave me a phone call. Like, Erica is like real like that. Like, yeah. if she supports you, she'll call you, she'll start following you, she'll continue conversations with you, you know what I'm saying? And, um, she asked me how much it took to like have me and my band perform. She wanted me to be comfortable. It wasn't because she was booked through another promoter or whatever. It wasn't go through the promoter. It was like, no, nah, I'm going to make it happen. This how much time you got, you know, whoop, 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 here's yeah. your money. I'm like, what the hell? That's like, and she's not crazy. only done that for me. She's done it for me. She's done it for Janelle Monet. She's done it for uh, Duran Bernard. Like mm -hmm. so many artists like she believes in like. And I just strive to be that same type of right. artist that's never disconnected to the pulse of what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I think she's still relevant. You right. Know? Mm -hmm. Is there any um, advice um, that she gave you? Uh, any words of wisdom? Advice that she gave me, words of wisdom. That, that but her, I think she gave to me in her actions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Never lose touch of your foundation of the grounding of where you came from. You know what I'm saying? Be that bridge for the new generation and now and you know what what is going on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. last year you dropped a record called Everybody Breathe. Yes. Um very powerful record. You know, it came in the moment of, you know, we had just got locked down for the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um we're dealing with you know stuff with George Floyd, mm -hmm. Ronna Taylor, yeah. uh, the protests, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk about why that record was so so important to make. Well, first of all, before that record came, I had just I was totally uninspired to do anything. I think everybody probably was, you know what I'm saying? And being on the internet was like it just felt like a task and like a heavy weight, you know. I was just like, should I be on here every time you turn around and somebody else getting shot? And then there's the whole COVID thing going on. It was just like, it was just a lot. So I just needed to like unplug from everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And just found my, find my grounding. And that's where I, I, I did like a, what was it? A four, 14 or 21 day abundance challenge. And while I was doing that and just doing my meditations every day and my daily exercises where I, you know, came to the conclusion that, you know, you're never alone about that collective, um, that collective thing, uh, of existing with me, you, nature, all that stuff. And I yeah. was just like, thank all, all these aha, thank you God moments. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I thought about Nina Simone and how she always said it's an artist's responsibility to reflect the times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And my friend Kenya, Kenya Griffin, who has since passed on, um, she wanted to do something with the dance community to make a statement and a stand against police brutality. And um yeah, I heard this track online. I don't know the artist's name anymore, but I was inspired to write Inhale, Exhale, yeah. Everybody Breathe. Yeah. Um, and from that, I was like, Munir, I can't use that track because that ain't my track, but <laughs> 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 I can't do that. But can we create something for Kenya? Because Kenya heard it and she was inspired because it was really just about maybe 13 seconds long. She's like, Robbie, I love that melody. Can you? make this into a full song so mm -hmm. like the dance community of Atlanta can come together and you just be the voice of um you know yeah, the voice of what we're doing to take a stand against police brutality I was like sure and me and Munir Zaki who also produ produced touch yeah um, shout out uh we went to his house and in about I don't know it was like definitely one day we wrote the whole thing he produced it and when it was over we were like this is really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just thought we we're gonna do a little, a little something to you know uplift people. Like, but when we were heard it, we was like, "Good grief, this is like really a statement." You know what I'm saying? So yeah, shout out to Munir, shout out to God for giving it to us. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> shout out to Kenya, Lord rest my soul, and um, yeah, an entire Atlanta dance community for that. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Now. Being an artist, you know, you have to be able to express yourself creatively. 
and a certain artist caused a lot of controversy um, oh recently. <laughs> um, and I want to talk to you about it. Uh, Lil Nas X dropped uh, a visual for his song, Montario. That's the name of the song, right? Montario? Montero. Montero that's his name. Mm -hmm. Call Me By Your Name. And it got a lot of controversy, got a lot of people talking, not because of the song, but because mm -hmm. of the video and everything that was right. uh, in it. I wanted to ask you, there were a lot of people that sang that, you know, it was too much and da da da, mm -hmm. and the kids and da da. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, as an artist, you know, nobody wants to be bound to any limitations on how they express themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, if they feel like this is what they want to put out, they have that right to do. You know right. what I mean? So I want to ask you, is there like a line? Is there ever a line for an artist to cross mm -hmm. when they're creating? Um, I think that's specific to that artist. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, that line is determined by that artist. You know what I'm saying? Uh, did Lil Nas X video like shock me? Absolutely. But that's shock that art. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that, yeah. That's that's shock art. Um, I loved when Lady Gaga did that for one of her performances. Shock I don't know. I don't know I don't, yeah, it's it's actually it's a little like thing where um okay. you use just the element of shock to uh, inspire and to uh, go against. Uh, a, a specific way that the majority of people are thinking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I took my hat off to Gaga for doing that a lot of times to tackle a lot of issues like um, poison, like poison and food. You know, like when she did, um, what song was that? Um, da -dum -bum -bum -bum. The song with Beyonce. Oh, gosh. Video phone? Yes, I think it was or video phone. Telephone? What telephone, else? telephone. Yeah. yeah, where on the surface it looks like, you know, they just went on a killing spree and at the end of the day, everybody in the, in the restaurant was dead and they were on the floor. Um, and um, Lady Gaga and Beyonce were dancing um, the American flag colors and stuff. Yeah. But when you look into it, like from the beginning of the video, she had in Diet Coke um, rollers. She had cigarettes <clears throat> in her um, glasses. Yeah. They ate a honey bun. They talked about beef. Uh, in all of these things, that's what, uh, I forgot what it's called, but uh, MSG or something that it has it's also in rat poisons all, all these materials diet coke cigarettes honey buns all that and it's essentially ultimately killing everybody in America and America just dances and celebrates while all these people are dying so I got it I loved it you know what yeah. I'm saying so I'm sure just like this um, situation with Lil Nas X he was um, tackling a bigger issue you know what I'm saying and but he wanted to just put that in your face to make you feel something, you know what I'm saying, so we can have that discussion, you know. Yeah. Now, would I do it? You know, I come from, I come from the church, so Please. I can't do that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I appreciate him for doing that, but yeah. there's just, that's a line for me that okay. I can't cross. I would have had um, people uh, go to heaven and everybody that's been like bashing gays go to hell and then the gays just in heaven just celebrate, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the way I would have did yeah. it because of the way my beliefs and everything, you know what I'm saying? So, but I can't knock him for what what he did, but you know, I I wouldn't have done it, but mm -hmm. I can't knock him for doing it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah, but I appreciate why he's doing it and I can uh, totally understand why he's doing it because I can relate to it, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, shout out to Lil Nas X and um, I would love to do a song with you. <laughs> right, yeah, well, <laughs> so, um, before before you, you get up out of here, I want to thank you so oh, much for coming I don't by. Want to leave. It is, <laughs> I want to I want to ask you. A lot of people think that this thing is just you know I'm just gonna be a star. I'm just gonna oh my God. make these hits. I'm gonna go viral. All this stuff overnight. It really determines how dedicated you are mm -hmm. to your craft and to be in it this long and to still be going and still be changing and growing and mm -hmm. becoming better. I wanted to ask you, what are five things that mm -hmm. you have learned during your entire journey thus far? Uh, Number one, I thought about this earlier, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, learn to do a little bit of everything. You know what I'm saying? Cutting your hair, <laughs> uh, styling your clothes, uh, figuring out how to put a show together, like figuring out who, you know, it did, well, this is if specifically people that are doing music, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, but in any craft, try to, whatever your craft is, 
try to learn how to do a little bit of everything. You know what I'm saying? That that's needed in whatever field that you're in. Mm -hmm. Look at shit. Look, you got your little mic, you got your lights, you know, both ultimately you're gonna have a full team doing this for you but yeah. these are the steps you're making you know yeah. what I'm saying so hats off to you um two don't stop you know what I'm saying don't stop the only thing that uh, separates somebody who makes it makes it who um cause what is making it I mean if you're living your passion then yeah you made it you know what yeah. I'm saying like but the only thing that separates somebody who makes it from somebody who doesn't make it somebody gave up you know what I'm saying so don't give up. Mm -hmm. um, live, learn, and grow. You know what I'm saying? Do it, make your mistakes. But when you make your mistakes, you know, okay, look at it and so you can continue to move forward. Don't go in no circle. So I'm when I say don't stop, like don't keep going and doing the same thing and thinking you about to <laughs> keep elevating. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You need to be learning from what you're doing. So live, learn, grow. That's three things. Four. <laughs> I love God. You know what I'm saying? Pray. Just have a, a, a believe in something. Right. You know what I'm saying? Believe in something. God, a source, a higher being. Like so, I just just got to be grounded in something because life is crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to have something to bring you back to your center, mm -hmm. or you gonna fucking this thing eat you up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I guess number five. Keep good energy and good people around you. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, cause together we inspire masses. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you can't do this shit by yourself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Look, your good friend over here. Y'all can't see her, but he got one of his best friends over here helping him. You know what I'm saying? Bad. Shout Listen. out to she's what? bad. Shout out, yeah. And she's fine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Keep some nice, friendly, and beautiful inside and out yeah. friends around you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what I would say. Yeah. Okay, and support right. each other. Don't let it be one sided. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, that's that's another thing that I'm learning. Like networking and, in the city mm -hmm. and getting to know people. Some people just want to like do something for their gain. They yeah. don't really want to like. And respect your friends and don't be so like into yourself to not want to go get a job. You know what I'm saying? Because you make like shit. Everybody can't be the drug dealer. You know. What I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Without, yeah. Everybody can't be the drug dealer with all this money. Everybody can't have all these parents with all this money. So you may need to get like two, three jobs, you know what I'm saying, to, to fund what you're doing. I didn't want to at first. I was like that. But I was like, this shit ain't, ain't, ain't happening. The way I, my ideas, I need to do something, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I had to start singing with a, a corporate band. I had to, you know, st start doing some other things, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. my, my brother's I am Zoe, so I don't know if people know this, but I went to school for music management, so me and my best friend co-managed my brother, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's just, different thing. it ain't just Rabbi. I had to get some merchandise to like, you know, try to fund some of these the stuff I got going on. So mm -hmm. I got some cool merchandise, um, hellorabbi.com. And ATL Ho! ATL Ho. Did you bring, yeah. did you bring anything? <laughs> Listen, I, I want, yeah, I want, I want, I want. That's all I'm saying. I got you. Yes, ATL Ho, like, I'm a proud ATLian, so I just wanted to make a statement, specifically doing that, um, the, uh, the, the election. The, yes, yes, absolutely. That we was, went blue. We turned blue, so that's why the hoodie and shirts are blue. Yeah. And we did that, ATL Ho, you know what I'm saying? So, and people that's not from Atlanta be like, why do you want to call yourself an ATL Ho? I'm like, not a literal hoe, it's pride. That's where I'm from, hoe. Yeah, ain't yeah, yeah, hoe. Yeah, yeah, that, you know that was, that was... <laughs> I thought it was clear. Yeah. No, people would be like, oh, I can't wear that. I'm not a hoe. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you dumbass. You dork. I like saying that. I don't know why I like saying dork. It's just always that. Uh -huh. It's fucking dork. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's it. No, yo, you're I'm fine. I want to thank you so much. But we finally got thank this you. man yes, on absolutely. here. Thank and we washed so our much. hands. No COVID here. Oh yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Um, anybody that wants to follow you, mm -hmm. buy your merch, listen to your music, where can they do that at? Absolutely. Uh yeah. You can follow me on Instagram at Robbie Raw, R-A-H-B-I-R-A-W. Um, and my website is hello Robbie.com. H L L O R A H B I dot com. Okay. Everything is there, the music, you know, the merch, all that good stuff. 
I appreciate you because you know TMZ ain't called yet. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, that's the bad people, right? Are they good? I don't know. They over here leaking elevator videos. Oh now, hell, so well we ain't got. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. Well, and thank you again. Thank you again so much. I make sure y'all go stream and follow Robbie. Yes. I'm yours truly, Rick the Prince. You just watch beneath the surface. Absolutely. And we out. Peace. Hey! <laughs> thank you. Thank no you problem. so much. That yes. was beautiful. Baby, won't you say? Now there you are, here I am, we face to face, and it's in your hands, ooh baby, take control, the Patrick love. We sold the soul. I know you know you got me going crazy. How off your love, I'm stuck and feeling lazy. I'm horny and you want it while you playing. If you want it like I want it while you waiting. Come to 